Hello everyone, Ben Emerson here. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm in my coaching academy here at San Martins. I'm joined by Holly. Holly, thank you so much for joining us today. We are going to show you how I use 3D in a lesson and some of the benefits that I see on a daily basis of how I use the system to get the most out of my players. Just to give you a bit of insight into Holly, Holly is one of my star pupils. She is 14 years old, hits it miles past me already. She comes from a gymnastics background. We've literally just done a TPI uh, screen on her. She's got a fitness handicap of plus three, which I've, is ridiculous as it is. Um, but coming from a from the gymnastic world she has the ability to get ridiculously into some <laughs> positions she can turn just keep turning 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 she's so hyper mobile and she can actually get herself out of those good positions so she can turn 90 degrees easily but she then carries on going keeps going keeps going keeps going she's like an owl she can keep going <laughs> unfortunately what we start to see with with holly is and you'll agree with this, right? Yeah, you, yeah. you can actually, you can turn to this position, but unfortunately when you start turning more, you start coming out of posture, carry on turning, and now we get into this, what we call reverse spine. She also has an issue which we've worked on hard of getting her posture bang on. So it used to be very S, didn't you, in this position, which then just helps or gets you into S posture, and it gets you into reverse spine, sorry, I should say easier right so what I want you to try and do is we're going to go for a couple of training drills to show how we've got you out of S posture and then I'm going to go through some of the biofeedback drills that I do with Holly just to train her to, to, to feel some different kind of moves and different positions so we've we've got a Holly you're kitted up in the 3D system let me just check it you're looking good and if I can just calibrate it for you, so if you can just stand like you're about, it's good if you can just try and hit a ball first, like pretend like you're going to hit a ball. And then I just want you to stand as tall as you can and just put the club in either hand like this. We're going to flatten this, flatten that. And I'm just going to calibrate it just so it's bang on with you. So if you have a look on the screen, do a little dance. Nice, welcome to the world of 3D. <laughs> So what we're going to try and do first is let's, let's show everybody your normal S posture, like before okay. we obviously worked on it. So let's go into that rounded kind of motion that we saw. So it's hard to see on the camera, but big S kind of shape. And you were, by the way, Holly, you were a lot worse than that yeah. at one point. Like yeah. it was ridiculous. So using the biofeedback on the screen, what I want you to try and do is like match up the lines and actually hear that sound. So as you can you hear that sound, you're in that nice tone that's you finding a nice neutral position now if you come out of it let's go into that s can you see all of a sudden you come out one of the best ways to do it so i don't want you to look at the screen to start with i literally want you to try and find it by okay. going into the tilt and then go the other way so holly is the only person that i've ever recorded on on the tpi app where she's only and she didn't even fail the two tests, but she struggled on two tests. One was balance, which from a gymnast is quite funny. <laughs> you obviously went on a pole. Um, but the other one was the pelvic tilt test. Yeah. Right? So for those of you who don't know the pelvic tilt, the pelvic tilt is very simply getting into a five iron position, going into S posture and then posterioring out and actually flattening your back. So when you do it, well, let's, let's show everyone. So if you go into, <laughs> go into a five iron position, Cross your arms, and I literally want you to belt going to go down, and then back up. So, like the nice thing is, you can do it, right? You're you are moving, but there is a lot of shake and bake in there, <laughs> aren't there? There's a lot of perturbation, right? There's so that kind of move says it's going to be hard for you to do it in your golf swing. In fact, I've never seen many. I haven't seen many people that I've recorded do that shake and bake move and still still hold that posture nicely. The weird thing is obviously for people that have never seen this before is why on earth are you asking me to do that funny move, right? But here's the thing, in the golf swing, you actually do that move, right? Club, borrow the club for a yeah. second. So like we've seen when we were recording you, you, if this was dead zero, if I was to tilt, actually go into my posture, my, my bend here is about 18 to 20 degrees. When I actually turn to the top of the swing, 
I lose a bit because I've added a bit of side bend in here, but I'm actually, I'm, I'm no longer in that 20. I've actually tilted out and I've flattened my back slightly and I've moved a couple of degrees. But when I come through to impact, I'm no longer like this, right? I have my, I've literally tilted out and I'm in this position, right? You don't see anybody like this still. <laughs> like, it looks ridiculous, but that, that actual movement happens in the golf swing, right? So if you can't do it fluidly, which is why those exercises that you've been doing are so key to, to vice And by the way, she was a lot worse than what you've just seen. It was quite funny the first time, but actually like she's moving in the right direction to have that as fluid as possible. Where I come from, from a, obviously a golf coaching perspective is if she's struggling to get out of it anyway, in a smooth motion, the more that you go into that S posture, it's now going to be even harder to get out. So it just makes complete sense to actually get you in a more neutral position. So then it's easier just to focus on the turn. But if we talk about then reverse spine for a second, so this is you going to the top of the swing and actually extending up and keep on reversing. And you, cause you can turn so much, you just like this <laughs> all the way through. So one of the things that we're obviously taught as a youngster is to try and take the club as far as we can, right? That's something that we all get taught. You see the old videos of John Daly all the way down here. And actually, like you see a lot of the long drives get all the way down here. From, from our perspective, right? If we want to hit the ball a long way, there's, there's two ways to do it. There is, is either we can use the force, so force in the ground, not actually turning much, but using kind of brute strength. And because we're adding a rotation, we're actually getting this torque and the more torque we put onto it, we can actually produce some powerful swings. Or we can actually try and do what I just said and try and take the club as far as we can. We call that ramp time. The, the further that club goes, the more time it's got to generate speed. It's got more time to apply that force and can produce some big numbers. Uh, Sasha um, McKenzie does it very well. If you, it says, if you put you on a chair and I put you like a foot away from a wall and I was gonna push you into the wall from like a foot away, it would hurt, but it, it wouldn't kill you, right? If I went back like 20 feet and I took a run up and now I pushed you all the way into the wall, it would really hurt because I've got more time to generate the speed. Where the long drives do this really well is they're big, they're strong, they're using the ground really well, but they're also all the way back here, so they're combining the two. For you, because it's so easy for you to just rotate, because you are so flexible and so hypermobile, We've just got to get you to a position where you're comfortable stopping and you're not, if you think this is flexing forward, this is extending backwards. In a golf swing, we want to flex forward and we want to rotate. There's a point where you are actually in the golf swing starting to extend up and moving up and up and up. But when we start going past this and actually go into the zero to minus numbers, which is what we saw on your 3D graphs, is actually when we go into this position, it's not because you've just carried on turning, it's because your spine has just kept going up and up and up and up and up. So if I was to do this, if I was to put my arms out straight and I was to extend backwards and I was actually to then rotate and have my left shoulder down, this is that position that we've just seen you do. Yeah. If we do that again, let's see what we see on the, the European tour is actually when you go down this way, if you flex forwards, left shoulder is still gonna go down, right? But as I rotate and I stay flex forward, now I'm still in this position where if I was to draw a line from my head to my hips, it's leaning away. It's never going that way and back, which just gets you really trapped behind. And as you've seen, we can hit all sorts of yeah. cool shots. <laughs> like everything, right? Like I'd, most people that I work with would love to be able to turn as much as you do. I always say like a glass of wine is a wonderful thing. Five bottles is a problem, right? You can overdo anything. You're 14 years old, please don't drink. <laughs> but this is, this is what I mean, right? I want you to learn to let's get you into a nice position. We're gonna turn, but I don't want you to extend up. We want that flex forward. So what I'm gonna do is do the next biofeedback drill. If I just go back one, now that you feel what posture's like, we're gonna go bend at the top. I'm gonna do this without reps. And so now if we take a setup, and I want you to practice this, right? So as you turn to the top, I'm gonna to still feel like you flex forward, you're still bent forward, and we're actually gonna rotate until you can hear that sound. And stop. 
see how easy it is for you to get out of it? Yeah. Like ridiculously easy. So like now you've got to a really nice kind of 90 degree position. You've carried on turning, but you've stayed forward doing it. You haven't gone back. So now go out of it like you were going. So now go back out, so lean back. Most people at home watching this cannot do that position. <laughs> like it's just ridiculously flexible. But actually that is a great way of you learning how to get to that top position. Yeah. So now we've got to try and hit some balls with it, right? So what I like to try and do is actually do it as slow as you can on the way back. Like let's stop, hear that sound. And I call this like awareness speed. So just as slow as you can, let's get to that nice position and let's see if we can hit a shot. Okay. That was awesome. Good. So good. So, so good. Now let's try just for a bit of feedback. Let's try and do the bad one. Right? Okay. So let's go. Let's, let's try and do your normal. Let's go. Keep turning, keep turning, keep turning. And see at what point we go past that sound. It's funny to think, right, like how that kind of happens, right? If you now watch the screen when you do that, so you can watch the screen on here. So actually turn to the top, listen to the sound, and now come out of it. Now let's go up and up and up. So that's you kind of out of posture. Yeah. So this is a really great way of using biofeedback to, to actually train those good positions, get you used to hearing the sound as opposed to just seeing it. Okay. And, and then you can just kind of play some golf. So let's try that again and let's see if we can do a full swing. So a little bit faster this time and let's see what we do. Okay. I think I went a little bit past but not heard the sound hugely. Come yeah. go. So how does that feel though? How do you think you could practice like that? Would that be? A yeah, that's, it, it doesn't feel weird but it obviously feels out of the ordinary because i'm normally so far back it feels like a three-quarter swing yeah, yeah it's amazing that though from a power perspective like yeah. feel and real are two very different things and that's one of the beauties of, yeah. of 3d technology but actually like imagine if you had this at home I'd, I'd be honest, <laughs> that'd be lovely all day it's not that expensive have a chat with your dad i will christmas present idea so let's try the same one again like i want to go let's do three balls and this is a nice little drill that I love to do with my players is we're going to do the first one and we're going to try and feel, hear that sound at the top. And I want you to do this as slow as you can, right? Okay. We're talking like granny speed, okay. right? This is like full awareness speed. I always say if you can't do it slowly, there's not a hope in hell of doing it fast, right? So I want you to feel like you're going to take it nice and slowly to the top of the swing and then feel that, hear that sound, get into that position and then unleash. Yeah. That was excellent, that was so good. So now, obviously, we don't want to just hit it like that, we want to kind of build it into the swing, right? So let's just do the next one a tiny bit faster, like okay. if that was kind of 20%, 30%, let's kind of ramp it up to sort of 50 to see if we can integrate it into your swing. Yeah, that wasn't as good, that was more... All of a sudden, adding a bit more velocity, so it comes back. Went a bit faster, yeah. And then just, if we were on the driving range, we would do the whole process again, but as we're doing this, now I want you to do a full one. Okay. I'm not sure I was there long enough to hear the no. sound as much I went too far. And that's the nice thing when you're doing something slowly, right? If you think of other sports, like you, you walk through the plays, like in pretty much every sport that yeah. you do. No one actually goes full pelt. Apart from one sport, golf, we like to just tonk it down there as hard <laughs> as we can, right? But that's really hard to change a movement pattern. And that's why this biofeedback is so cool, is you can not only see it when you're looking on the screen, you can hear it, which yeah. means then it's easier to relate back to how that is from a feeling. Yeah. And then by going through those three balls of just going slow, medium, and then fast, it's just a really great way of like integrating it into the swing. Okay. One of the 
cool things with 3D is then obviously we can just test how that, what that actually done in your swing, yeah. right? So let's go back and we'll actually film a, we're actually gonna measure you up. So let's just recalibrate it again. So stand nice and tall, just in case nothing, anything's moved. And I'll flatten the wrists, nice. Gonna calibrate and let's, let's hit a shot. Okay. Sounded like a good shot. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like a great shot. So one of the things we can then look at in 3D is we can then go into that exact shot that you've just done. We can look at all the reports, all the graphs of which segments started first. So transition sequence, so that's you at the top of the swing before the club changes direction, lower body going first, which you do so well, lower body's gone first, then upper body. The hands have then moved before the club, which I know is something we are working on. Yeah. Then we can see how things start to slow down, but then we can also see how fast each segment are moving and your hips are moving ridiculously fast <laughs> for a 14 year old. Um, if I then go back and actually let's look at the video playback of that particular last one. And we go to, if we just turn on shoulders. So bear in mind, we were seeing the turn on the right get to 110, 18, that, Look at this, still going quite far, Holly. But now you've got it to 106. Yeah, that is better from like 150. It's, it's still, we've still got some work yeah. to do, right? The, the job's not over. But the bend is, if you think, minus number is when you go back this way. Okay. So we wanna, but that was ridiculously far back. Like, so that has improved at the top. You've still got a huge turn, which is why you can generate so much power but we've got to keep working on this to get, get that low. Yeah. One of the things we're going to see, and we've seen it when we use your pressure plate, is when you, have to, when you go so much this way, you've got to work so much harder to kind of get out of it, to the point with you with a driver, as you know, are off, off the, the ground. ground. Yeah. You're literally airborne. Do you think that'd be useful? Should we do that next yeah. time? Next time yeah. we see you, yeah. yeah? So we'll carry on on that process next time. I, I'm desperate to see you in a plus number. Okay. with a bend. Yeah. I'd love to see you in uh, feeling like holding that position better and actually getting used to hitting some shots. So we will yeah. do that again. Yeah. Holly, thank you so much for, for doing right. that. Not many people are watching this, I'm sure, so don't, don't <laughs> worry. Um, everyone at home, I hope you enjoyed that. Ask me as many questions as you like. I love 3D. I've been a fan of it. I've been using it for eight years now, I think, with the guys from K-Motion. So ping us any questions anytime. Ask us after this. Um, I'm always happy to help. I hope you've enjoyed that and uh, look forward to your questions.